Hey everyone, how's it going? Octopus here and welcome back to Ever Crisis. We're going to be talking about every R ability that's in the game that you should probably be going for or not going for, depending on your account. Not just like a general blanket, because there is a couple things where like, yeah, this is a great idea, you should do this. A weapon's at 54, you should push it to the next level, so it's at 55, right? There's those general things, but every account is different. All of you guys have different overboost weapons. So I want to give you a video where it's more going to give you the idea of looking at your own setup and be like, you know what, this is what I need not because that person did it or that person did it. This is what my account needs. So I'm going to jump you into this video with that in mind, go through all the characters, elements, and giving you a good idea of like what our abilities are really important, what weapons are really good. And if you're new to the game, this is a very good introduction into our abilities because it's a little complicated and the filter system isn't the greatest and you have to remake a party over and over and over again. So let's try to simplify this as much as possible. It is very simple, but it can get complicated again, depending on your account. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, because if there's new players coming over, you guys are looking at the banner, and the only banner right now is this one, and later it's going to be Zack and Sephiroth. So this R ability and this setup and this costume are really, really strong. So the weapon itself, you don't even need to pull multiple copies. This is a great candidate for level 120. Here's 120, one copy. You get yourself 30 R ability. Now, looking at this, this is probably a terrible idea. I'm going to come over here just because this is a much better spot. So 30 R ability on Cloud. Whenever Cloud's in the party, just with this weapon in the main hand, will give you a boost of 18% to everyone's physical attack stat. That is gigantic. And if you only have one copy and you put this on a healer, a buffer, a support character, or just a, a character that has ice potency that needs it, it's going to be cut in half to 15 points, which is 14% boost to everybody on the team. So no matter what, one copy of Glenn and Cloud's weapon is very powerful at level 120. And if you get both of them at over boost 10 for some reason, and you put that on any character in the game, 23, 23, back to 46, 46 is 25%. Every healer, every buffer, any character you ever hold on to will give a 25% boost if these are over boost 10 in the back, both being level 120. So no matter what over boost this is, 40 points, right? 20, 30, half, these are great, great choices. And I do think that if you are new or if you're someone who's currently playing who can pull, getting one copy just for that 15 points on a healer, on a buffer, or even just putting Cloud in your team and putting down the main hand, fighting Bahamut with Bandage Sword to raise your magic defense, you no longer are there just for Bandage Sword. You can now increase your DPS, D, uh, your main DPS, let's just say it's Tifa, and give her an extra 14% just for have or sorry, in this case, an extra 18%. So really good choices. I want to really emphasize the newest banner because that's probably what a lot of people are looking at. And that is a great choice to go for. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you guys my setup and then show you every character and their weapons and what I think is the best choices. The blanket of like what you should be doing is any weapon that is at level 90 fully over boosted should be pushed from 54 to 55 by just upgrading to level 100, right? So let's take my red 13, for example, here. I think red right now, fantastic fire DPS, right? Here's mine. I've got a fully maxed out Rage Caller OB10 at level 80. It's got 54 boost attack. One more point, and this goes to 55. Uh, obviously, I got to show you right now. You know what? The thing is, I want to show you, but I don't need to. And here's a really good example. But weapons like this that are 54 and just need one point, make them to level 100. Because the next upgrade goes to level 100, right? Not level 80, but 90 to 100 does that. And the reason I'm not doing it, and this is that term, like, okay, if a weapon can go past 54, do it. Because that one main hand weapon, any character you have, their main hand weapon, uh, let's just say Glenn's weapon into consideration here, right? Glenn's automatic on his main hand. If he's main handing this weapon... Right, it goes over 54. It goes to 55 at level 100 at a, a fully over boosted. And if you don't have it fully over boosted, you can see OB6 at 120 gives you 54 points. Right, so one more copy over and you start increasing that. These are really good ideas to do. Anything that's in the main hand that can be upgraded, do it. Like Sephiroth's Radiant Edge, right? It's at 54 points. If you're using Sephiroth as that fire DPS and you want to use that to fully max out his physical attack, do it. But here's a little rule, and this is why I'm showing Red 13. Now, Red has this, 54. You're like, okay, why not just upgrade to level 100? Make that over 55, so now you're good. 
And then what you can do is use whatever you want back here. The thing is, this is an elemental build, and it wouldn't make any sense to focus on that because there is other weapons back here that also boost my attack while boosting a lot of fire. So now that I'm fully maxed out on physical attack, boost attack, I want to work on my elemental damage, and a fully maxed out crystal sword gives me 52 fire, one of the best ones in the game. If you look at Radiant Edge from Sephiroth, it only gives 39, right, compared to that 52. And this one goes all the way up to 100 points for that 120. So you want to aim for that now that our builders are so easy to get boost attack. But the whole thing is that this already has boost attack mixed with my main hand. He's got way too much boost attack. So leveling this weapon just because it's a 54 to get it over to 55, be it on Red, on Sephiroth, on Glenn, right? You've got to realize what is your build and are you using weapons in the back that are ready to give that extra 1.2 point, right? So there's no point to overboost something to 54 and up if it's already being done back here. What you want to look at is go through your list and be like, okay, I'm missing boost attack. I should work on the weapons that do that, right? A fully maxed out Killer Hornet is just like Zidane. These two weapons are exactly the same. 34 points, 24 points, right? So Final Fantasy Night Weapon, Killer Hornet. If you were to fully max this out and put in a backhand of a character, that gives 23 points. This is very important because here's another thing you guys should consider to upgrade. Anything that has a mixture of 46 at fully overboosted and gets cut in half to put in someone's back is 23. Mix that with something that is at level 90, fully maxed out, it'll be 54, right? So a bald eagle, radiant edge, a lot of weapons are at 54 physical attack. Let's say Red 13, he's not able to do a physical attack in his front hand, right? There is no weapons in his arsenal that give physical attack our ability. There's boost attack, magic, right? HP, but there is no physical attack. So he suffers from not having physical attack. If I were to take something like Radiant Edge and make this to level uh, 90, fully over boosted, it would be at 54 or level 120 at OB6, it'll be 54. So I get 27 points. And then I take something like Killer Hornet, or let's just use Zidane's weapons, the same thing. I fully max out Killer Hornet, OB10, or this one, and I cut that to 23. So 23 plus the 27 is 50. And if a character gets an Arcanum costume, those Arcanum costumes give plus five physical attack, right? Same thing with magic attack and all that. Here's uh, Sephiroth, for example. This gives you the last five that you need. Boost magic attack plus five. So any weapon in the backhand that's a combination of what the character's main hand is missing is a very good way of making sure that that's what I want to make level 20, 120, right? So if I were to fully max out Absolute Royale, I get 46 points, cut in half, 23. Let's just pretend he doesn't have a boost magic attack in the front. So that goes to 23, and then you grab another weapon, fully max out 54, that's 50, plus his costume 55. So now you have 55 boost magic attack just because you made those levels level uh, weapons level 120. So look at that, look at your setup and be like, oh, this is what I need to get to the next level. This is at 55 points. The next one is at 65. How do I get 10 more to get 15% more damage? That's what you guys want to do when you're building your setup. Look at what you need, right? So in this case, Sephiroth has 38 magic attack. All I need this is in the background and I'm good to go. I don't even have to make this level 120. I don't have to touch anything on Sephiroth when it comes to his boost magic attack. I need to work on his other weapons, like this one right here, Silver Staff. It's at 30 points, 24. If I were to enhance this to level 100, with the new mats, it goes to 33, right? That's what I do need, I need more boost attack. And so on and so on and so on on this weapon. I wanna keep maxing that weapon out as much as I can, just so I can get it to give more boost attack. So right now it's at 30, fully max out, it goes to 46, cut that half as 23, right? So now I get 23 points from that instead of 15. That's an extra eight points. And right now my character is at 45, eight points would bring it to 53. And then I max out this one or make this one level 100, 110. And now I'm gonna have 55 and 55 on the biggest things that give me huge boost. And I can continue working on boost ice potency because they both offer that as well. So this I know is a solid choice for Sephiroth's ice build because these weapons, as I get stronger, they're gonna max out these two stats for me and my boost ice potency. So that's what you guys wanna look at. Your build, see what you need on the weapons you got overboosted as you pulled for. 
right? You don't want to go, okay, well, my lightning cloud, my example here, I got a fully maxed out level 90, uh, what do you call it? Murr saw me. Let me make it 120. Going from level 90, fully maxed out, to level 120, fully overboosted, I get an increase of six boost attack. There's no point to this. Three lightning. If you look at my R abilities, just having that at 40 plus my costume gives me five. I'm at 45. All I need is 10 and all of Cloud's weapons, especially his off hands weapons, are giving boost attack as well. And then my back weapons can focus on the normal attack, not physical attack. So you can see he's got 62 points, 55 points. He's got 48 in lightning. I want to work on my lightning attributes, right? Because everything else on this cloud is fine. And maxing out these weapons from 90 to 120 doesn't change the C ability. So this would be a complete waste for me. This would be just not increasing my damage substantially. Besides physical attack stat or any stat on a weapon does increase. 573 to 667. So almost an increase of 100 attack, but that's something like, do you want that 100 attack or do you want another one of your characters or do you want your lightning potency to be higher? So now that you have the general idea of like how to build a character according to your team for 120 weapons, let's talk about every character and their setups and what's really good for their main hand and then just our ability wise. Don't sleep on boost HP. Boost HP is huge. For example, Mad Minute gives both an HP boost while increasing a high amount of physical attack stance, right? And these are one of those things that are very powerful on anyone, even if they're elemental or non-elemental. Increase in like physical attack stance is strong. So even though the majority you're gonna see as I run through all these, it's the same thing over and over. Boost magic attack, boost physical attack R ability. And then it complements with an element or an attack stance. So the main thing you guys are looking for is to increase this first on a main character's main hand, or boost magic attack. If that's not possible, boost their attack to 55 on their main hand right away. And then in the back, you give them the what they need. Physical attack or boost magic attack by combining two back weapons with that 23, uh, 27 arcanum rule, right? A weapon that has 46 and a weapon that has 54 in the back slots will now give you max out of whatever ability stance you need. And the other thing to look out for is the boost physical ability potency and the boost magic ability potency. Very, very powerful. So the general idea is going to be the same. As you see, I go through all the characters. It's the same. How I taught you how to build is what is going to be added. But for Lucia, Bald Eagle is one of her strongest in hand, right? Just because it boosts his attack by 54 plus, you're going to get ice potency on that. Mad Minute has survivability, attack stance. You got Tranquilizer Gun. Uh, not Tranquilizer Gun, it's the red one. They look exactly the same. It's the pulse gun, has boost attack, wind damage, great combo. Her thunder builds are actually really crazy because an SSR has the best boost lightning potency, R ability, and it gives you survivability. So if you need survivability with lightning, very powerful. And then she has another thunder weapon that does maxed out magic attack and boost lightning. If she ever gets a magic lightning arcanum costume, she's going to be super powerful. Very, very powerful because she maxes out this on her main hand and then those two offhand R abilities for lightning, strong. And these both can be used for lightning setups if anyone ever gets a magic lightning because Cloud's the only lightning one in the game. So, very powerful, Thunderbird, SSR, Mad Minute survivability, you've got a Holiday Revolver for Magic Earth and main handing Bolt Eagle for that maxed out boost attack. Very, very powerful choices for her. If you need survivability with water, that's a good choice, Serpent Eater. Next up is Matt, and Matt's Killer Hornet is like a solid choice. Any physical DPS in the game can benefit from this, and if he main hands this, it's super strong as well. Very powerful choice, just like the Zidane weapon, they're identical. Just one was limited, and this one wasn't. Different characters, right? When it comes to healing weapons, don't really bother. Make them level 80, 90, and just overboost them as you go. Don't push them to 120, especially with how rare the mats are right now. Uh, next you have his absolute royal yell for magic ice build. You've got his orthodox for HP, water survivability, and then broadsword for physical attack and lightning. Very, very powerful unit overall, benefiting to a lot of different characters. Uh, that's Matt set up. Glenn up next, his shock buster is good for our abilities for any character. His main hand would be automatic because this is way too strong. You put this on and then you have to work on physical attack with the other R abilities in the back. 
He does have the pumpkin, which can be upgraded, but it only goes to 31 and it's not really worth it. So automatic on him is a very good choice and it's really good for any other physical DPS in the game. So you've got your boost attack lightning, boost attack attack stance. You've got your earth magic, right? You've got survivability for uh, HP fire, HP water. Really, really, really good choices on Glenn here. You can't go wrong. When it comes to Sephiroth, Sephiroth has multiple main hand builds. He's got Radiant Edge. He's got Dark Heavens for the boost attack, Wind. He's got his uh, Edge Wings, which is boost attack, Ice Potency. Very, very powerful setups. And then for our abilities for anyone, you've got your Shinra Blade, which boost attack and boost ability, ability potency. I use that a lot. Prototype for fire builds, boost attack, 39 fire. You've got lightning magic, very good lightning, 52 again, with boost magic attack, very, very powerful. If you need that survivability, Mithril's good. It's got 46 boost of magic ability potency, super, super strong for an R ability weapon. Same thing with the Zynobi, but not really. The stats don't go that high. It's just good to use on him. So, overall, Sephiroth's Edge Wings. Dark Heavens, really good main hand weapons. You've got Radiant Edge to back, uh, back up that boost attack as high as possible. And then all his elemental weapons, right? You can't go wrong with these choices. Everything else is just a mixture of two things that don't really combine too good or they're very niche moments. Uh, next up, we've got Zack. Zack's Black Whiskers is a solid choice for his main hand. Maxing out at 62 and water potency while lowering defense and water defense. <clears throat> you can't go wrong with that. You've got survivability on Twinkling Star, along with boost physical attack potency. Very powerful. You've got his other options like Falchion that gives physical attack and wind. His Crystal Sword, which I'm using for Red 13, boost attack and fire. Very, very strong. And then from there, it's just like niche moment. So Black Whiskers, very good main hand. Survivability attack, wind damage, fire damage, and everything else is just here and there. So... After that, we've got ourselves Yuffie. Yuffie's a very powerful R ability for anyone in the game or herself. Arctic Star is super strong at 120. 46 boost attack for her. She's only missing 10. And then 39 buff duration, bringing her at 150% increase to anything she does. Or as an offhand weapon for anyone is strong. 23 attack for anyone while increasing their buff durations or debuffs by 80% as a sub weapon very strong choice and then everything else is like every other character <clears throat> do you need boost attack ice do you need uh boost attack wind do you need magic with ability potency survivability ice physical attack fire or if you want survivability with buff duration these are all solid choices depending on what you want so you can kind of see the pattern right every character has something for someone it just depends on what you pull and you over boost but main hand weapons for red 13 rage caller 100% for fire builds, really strong with this caution if you got it. You've got survivability lightning, which I was using on Cloud for a long time. He has a lot of good choices, just like uh, Yuffie does. Boost magic attack 62, wind damage on his uh, canyon collar, very powerful. You've got survivability leather collar with earth damage. You have boost attack with water. You've got so much boost fire, boost water, earth, wind right lightning survivability he has really good r abilities all of these stack very very high his noble collar 46 39 water so he's got a lot of good choices for his main handing rage collar is probably his best one because it can max out one of the stats or you can bring in big survivability with elements along the way he's just missing a physical attack one but that's that's red right now he's in a weird place now when it comes to Aerith, Aerith, boom sun umbrella sun umbrella is just so powerful Boost magic attack 46, 39 magic ability potency. Her snowflake, super strong as well too. Boost 62 magic attack with ice potency, right? She has survivability and magic with lightning. So if there is ever a magic lightning character, this is going to be one of the sub weapons you're going to use unless they come with the 54 on them already. Then not really necessary. Your wind survivability prism rod. You can't look at that and be like, no, I'm not doing that because survivability is very important in this game, especially when you look at the new Bahamut Ifrit, and it comes with wind potency, super strong. So, Prism Rod, Umbrella, her Snowflake, her Wizard Staff, even her uh, Wiser Staff over here has survivability in Earth at 39, right? Tons of choices depending on what ha what's happening in the game. 
So that is Aerith along with her Silver Staff for Boost and Ice that I use on Sephiroth. Very, very solid choice. Now, when it comes to Tifa, Tifa has the uh, the new limit guide gloves that just happened crossover. Final Fantasy limited ones. She's got ice potency with physical attack. She's got the soul power soul glove that has boost magic ability potency and survivability. She's got boost attack with wind, right? She's full of great choices. You need physical attack wind on her main hand. This fully maxes out and it has 79 wind damage. High score challenge right now can't go wrong and overall just DPSing is a beast. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful ice setup if you had her Arcanum costume, right? So these are just good choices as sub weapons as well. If you have the limited ones, they have the boost attack potency and then you have survivability with attack stances as well with magic. So if you want that survivability lightning on Cloud or anyone in the future, 62 boost HP, ridiculous. On her, 80% increase on anyone else, 45% increase just with this weapon uh, alone. Crazy. She's got good choices there. Whatever you need, you're solid. Now, when it comes to Barrett, Barrett's got very good choices for his main hand. Being Heavy Hauser for himself, if you fully max this out, he gets 46 and 39 boost to attack stances. Enemy Launcher has boost attack with boost of physical ability potency at 52. Very, very good choice as well. Flamethrower being that fire magic, 46, 39. He's got a good choice. Again, healing setups, don't worry about it. But when it comes to Barrett, he hasn't got much love in this game. Uh, he has really good R ability weapons for himself. He's got like a that, but he doesn't have any costumes to go along with them. So you're focusing more for R abilities when it comes to him to benefit other people. So enemy launcher, heavy hauser, boost fire, and then everything else is situational. You can see everything survivability, survivability, survive. He's the tank, just like he's in game. So Cloud is coming up next. And Cloud has so much, right? Cloud's got Zidane's weapon, like Killer Hornet. He's got Fire Sky Splitter that can be main handed. He's just made to be your main DPS in this game. Uh, neutral damage, fire damage, water damage, wind potency, right? Boost attack, ice. He just has so, so much. Murasami, lightning, main hand. And you guys saw what I already did the rules. Like you could boost it to max it out, but you're not doing much depending on what the rest of the setup is. But yeah, Zidane, the Sky Splitter, Enhanced Sword, Apocalypse, Merry Time, Murasami. These are all choices depending on what your sub weapons are. But main handing, he has one, two, three, four solid choices for main handing a weapon. I would say Apocalypse, but Apocalypse doesn't bring in wind damage. It does 940, but it is a good version instead of like doing Zidane. It just doesn't give double like Zidane gives neutral damage with both neutral damage stat increases so you can't go wrong with cloud cloud's got a very good setup uh buster sword is one of those things that people do think about but not really worth it 31 39 it's the only weapon in the game that does a boost attack and hp where everything else is hp attack stats element right so it's one of those choices but leave it the way it is it's totally fine for now not really needed it your your mithril ore which is super or ingots are super rare are best used somewhere else so overall that's what you guys are looking at for all the characters the choice is yours in the end the beginning of this video is probably the most important part because you can see everything is the same our abilities is either boost attack boost magic attack or boost neutral and then boosting an element or stance besides that you mix and match what your character needs if i miss anything let me know down below in the comment section let me know your build so the community can see that as well what you guys favor what you use and why uh overall it is just based on your account there is favorable weapons like i showed you but they're all generically the same an attack boost an element boost so on and so on besides that thank you guys so much for watching keep on smiling and i'll smell you later